Hi, welcome back to Stitches by Christy. I'm Christy and today we're just going to continue on with um, our holiday sewing and crafting projects. Um, so today the feature project is going to be a pattern that I found from Jess at Okla Roots and I will link to her website in the bottom of this video so that if you want to grab the pattern or any of her patterns, she has several that you can grab. Um, this one is called the Anna Envelope Pouch and it's just an adorable little pouch that's the perfect size for a cute few cards if you want to grab to you know clip it on your keychain just to take on the go um, it would be great for gift giving stick a gift card in it and you've got a holiday gift ready to go um, and then they have something that's usable later um, it's a really quick sew and super easy to make um, and it's great because you can use all those vinyl scraps that you don't want to get rid of um, but they're kind of small. So this has really small pieces. You can mix and match, you can make it all one, um, whatever works best. So you truly can use up tiny little pieces of vinyl. Um, there are several ways to get this. You can, you will get it on Jess's um, website. And like I said, I will link that. You can get the, it's a free download where you can get just the pattern pieces. Um, she also has a tutorial on YouTube if you follow her channel. Um, so you can watch how she makes it. She has been stocking acrylic templates for it. Um, you just have to sign up for her email so you get notified when they're going to stock, but they are really handy to have. They're nice, thick acrylic templates. Um, and then you can also purchase the SVG files. Um, so if you have a cutting machine, um, a Cricut or a Silhouette or whatever, you can cut them out. Um, so any of those options are awesome to use. Um, so we will just go ahead and get started. Okay, so to get started on this, I'm going to show you what you need to have. We've already talked about the pattern pieces, the templates, whatever, um, however you choose to cut it out. Um, you will need to use vinyl for this because it is raw edges. Um, so just any scraps of vinyl that you want. Um, heat transfer vinyl is optional. You do not have to do this. Um, the only thing it does is just to pretty up the inside of it so that you don't see just the plain white back of your vinyl. Um, so that's completely optional. If you don't have heat transfer vinyl, don't worry about it at all. It's really fine. Um, and then you will also need, and this part is also optional. If you don't want the clip on the side, you don't have to put it. Um, but if you do put that, you will need to have um, a little swivel clip that has the half inch D opening right there. Um, these, the little tabs for them are going to be half inches wide, half an inch wide. So you just want it to fit nicely on there. Um, and just, you know, a nice swivel clip. Um, you also will need to have a snap of some sort. A lot of people like the plastic cam snaps. I am not a fan of those. So I use spring snaps and I can't get it open right now, but anyway. The spring snaps are just the metal snaps like this, okay? So that's what I use. Um, you can find them on Amazon fairly inexpensively. You can also find nicer, you know, rainbow finish ones. Um, you can you can find whatever you want and it's, it's a pretty inexpensive and they look like they're difficult to set but they are very easy. These kits come with setting tools and you just need like a small, like a jewelry hammer and a cutting board or something, some, some solid surface that you can use. Okay, so to get started, um, you will notice when you get this pattern that there are different options. You can either just do, for the back, there will be one big piece like this. Um, so basically this will be the flap that folds over to the front. Okay, but sometimes you use directional print vinyl. Well, if you use this piece, something's going to be upside down, okay? So you can use the other option um, and use your directional vinyl. So it will have this, and then it's got the back piece. So these two will get sewn together and flipped around so that it will look like that. And then when it folds, that's what I've done on this. So when it folds, you'll see a little bit of that contrast one right there on the front. Um, this option is awesome for using up scraps. Um, if you seriously want to use up all your tiny scraps and have 
one that's completely different colors just to use it for scraps. It looks really cool that way. I've seen some people do it and it's pretty awesome. So that is an option too. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these two pieces together so that um, then I can um, apply my heat transfer vinyl. So I'm going to move over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew those together. All right, I have moved over here to my industrial machine. Um, I've got these placed together so they're right sides together and I'm just going to stitch right along the top. When I am sewing vinyl, um, I try to avoid back stitching just because um, you don't want a ton of holes in vinyl because it does perforate it and it will eventually rip. Um, so I try to keep the least amount of holes as possible so I don't back stitch on vinyl. What I do is I keep my threads long and then if you just tug on one of the ones in the back, okay? It'll make like a little loop and then you can use something, an ink pen. I use the stiletto end of my seam ripper and I just pull that loop out, okay? And then you'll just knot it in the back. Sorry, I'm disappearing off the camera for a second. You just tie a really tight knot in the back and then um, just trim your threads down. And then what you want to do that will also help hold it in place is I just use a tiny lighter and just singe the ends of those threads. Don't burn it. If you're using um, this type of thread, it will just melt. The only, if it's cotton thread, your cotton thread is going to burn, but you shouldn't be using cotton thread on vinyl anyway. So you'll just go ahead and do that with both sides. And then that will keep it... Um, to where your stitches don't pull apart, it holds them in place, um, and you don't have to worry about extra um, puncture wounds, basically, <laughs> in your vinyl. Because um, like I said, vinyl is basically plastic. Um, the more holes you put in it, the more vulnerable it's going to be. Okay, so I've got both of mine burned off. Okay, now what you're going to do is you want to top stitch this flap. So just flip it up, okay, so that the seam allowance goes towards this back bodice, okay? And then you're just going to top stitch right along this edge here. Same thing, we're gonna tie off our threads, pull them to the back. I left them both long again. I'm gonna pull them to the back. And then um, you're gonna want to just kind of trim up if maybe you didn't get everything exactly straight. You can see on mine here, mine is overhanging just a little bit. So I'm just gonna trim that up just so it's straight. Send your threads again. Okay, got that, and now I'm going to just trim up that so it's all nice and straight. All right, so we've got that there. Okay, now the next thing we're going to want to do is, because this is ready, we are going to put our heat transfer vinyl, if you're doing that part. If you're not doing that part, just you can skip it. Um, I don't feel like it's necessary 
to put the heat transfer vinyl on every single piece. I feel like just on this big piece is really all you need. Um, so I'm just going to do that. Um, my iron or my heat press is in the other room. So I'm going to pause this for a second and I'm going to go iron mine on and then I will be right back. Okay. I have my heat transfer vinyl on. Um, when I do it, um, instead of trying to just cut the exact shape out, I just do a bigger piece and I put a piece of like parchment paper underneath so that if the vinyl sticks to anything, it's not a big deal. Um, sometimes the vinyl, the heat transfer vinyl wants to roll up and kind of slide around on you. So this gives me a little bit of wiggle room for, um, just getting it on. And then I just take my rotary cutter or scissors or whatever you have and just cut it out. So like I said, I did not put heat transfer vinyl on the other small pieces. I just do it on this one because that's what shows when you open it up. Um, but personal preference, if you feel like it needs it, go for it. And as I'm trimming this up, I still have my um, plastic transfer sheet on my heat transfer vinyl. It just makes it a little bit easier um, to trim up in my opinion. But again, you can take that off if it's easier for you that way. Um, just do it however makes the most sense to you. Okay, so that one is done. And now I'm gonna peel the transfer paper off. I just have that okay so our next step let me cut this one out real quick Just make sure you trim it up nice and neat around the edges so you don't have a lot of extra peeking outside because you will see it. Um, one thing I think that I forgot to mention, um, it's not required to do this and you absolutely can do it without, um, but if your machine can handle it, I highly suggest some double-sided tape. Um, it will just help everything stay in place nice and easy um but again not required you can absolutely just use clips i cannot get this one off you can use clips um whatever works best for you but if your machine can handle the double-sided tape i recommend trying it at least okay so i've got both of those with the heat transfer vinyl on it so i'm going to set those aside for just a second um and the next thing we want to do, because we need to mark for our snaps, um, just make sure you don't do your snaps out of order. Because um, if you'll notice on this one, I put this snap in before I top stitched, which is why this flap is not top stitched because the snap makes it too close. So that, that front snap is the very last thing you want to do after you've finished everything else. But you need to get this snap in before you do the other parts, otherwise you can't get in there to put your snap in. Does that make sense? So the step we wanna do now is we need to, if you're not using this little piece to make it look like the envelope like that, you can seriously just use the piece like this. You don't have to put the extra, I, I think it's cute having that on there, so I do it. Um, so we need to put those together first. So again, I'm going with the double-sided tape and I'm just gonna stick that in place. And like I said, you don't have to. If your machine can't handle going through 
the double-sided tape, but you still need help holding it in place. Um, a little trick I like to use is, see, I'm putting my tape at the top and bottom just to hold it in place. You could put just a piece like right here in the center so that it's nowhere where you're going to be stitching at all and it will hold it in place long enough for you to sew it um, but still not even ever touch your machine. So that's an option too. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and stick this onto the center so the bottom should line up and then the top center part. Okay, like that. I'm going to do my other one. You can always go back um, and trim things up, you know, if the bottom, like on this one, I must have cut a little bit crooked. So I'll just take my scissors and trim that up. Just make everything line up nice and neat. Um, so I got that one stuff on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to my sewing machine and we are going to just stitch the three sides, the side or the three edges. Don't do the bottom yet because you'll sew that in when you're putting everything together. So just go up one side, across the top, and down the other side, okay? Okay, I am back over here at my machine and I am going to top stitch just the three edges, leaving the bottom unstitched for now. leave the long thread so that we can tie them off in the back. No back stitching. I'm going to go ahead and tie off and singe my threads and then we are going to get out the pattern piece for this section so that we can mark our holes and insert our snaps. Okay, it is time to add the snaps just into this part. Like I said, don't do the flap yet. Um, so what we want to do is take your pattern piece and um, you can either make a mark and cut it however you like. Um, I just lay it right on top. And I have this little hole punching tool. You can find these on Amazon or whatever for fairly cheap. You can also use um, like these little hole punches that you can just hit with a hammer. Um, there's crocodiles, there's all kinds of options. Just whatever you wanna do to punch your hole. Um, I just use this. Use a cutting board, don't use like your regular cutting mat because it does tear it up. So I just find the hole in there and use this and poke the holes in it. Okay. Right. So I have them both ready. Um, now we're gonna use the spring snaps that I have. These are the metal spring snaps that I found on Amazon. These kits will come with the setting tools that you need for it. Um, so what we want to do first is we want to use the bottom set. So I'm going to use, I'll use a gold one. So the first piece that we need is the one, these are really hard to see, but the one that's taller that looks like this. So that is going to go through the hole that part will be in the back and the post will stick up 
through the top. And then you need the cap for that, which will be the shorter one, okay? And that will go snap right on top. Okay, and then you see this has the hole in the bottom, so we want this piece that has, there's a flat side, and then there's the raised side. So that will fit right on there, okay? And then I have got an arbor press, is what I use to set mine. You can use um, any kind of like cam press, um, I think Gold Star Tools sells one, but you can also just use these tools with like a jewelry hammer or a regular hammer. So for this part, you need, let me set this down. There are two of the setting tools, okay? This one will set your top piece. This is the one you need. It's got like a hole in this end. One end is just completely flat. You don't, that's where you'll hit from. The, there's a hole in this side that fits exactly over top of this. So it goes right in like that, okay? You wanna make sure that um, for this bottom piece, that the hole in here sits right over top of this raised um, center part because if you don't have it on there, it will crush it when you um, when you set it and you'll have to redo it. So I'm gonna come over here to my arbor press. And I hope you can see this, but I just hold this on like this and just press it down. And then after you've done that, it is your snap, that part of your snap is all set. So go ahead and do my other one too. I think the hardest part is finding the right pieces for the snaps. <laughs> So those two are done. Now we are gonna go and we're gonna put them, the entire thing together. Okay, so now we are gonna go ahead and put everything together um, so that we can sew them. So the first thing I like to do is I like to take my little tabs for my hooks. Um, again, you can use um, the double-sided tape if you want. If not, that's fine too. I like to just use a little, just to hold it together. Um, just, it makes it easier once I'm, when I'm trying to stick it in place if I don't have to worry about layers shifting. So I just stick my hook on like that, okay? I have a little bit of double-sided tape in there so that it can't pull apart. And I'll do my other one too. And I usually, as I'm putting them on, make sure that your clips actually work. Occasionally, you'll get a bad clip um, or one that's like, um, just won't open. Um, so I usually just check them before I get too far gone. Then you're gonna take your main back piece and you want to place this, I usually keep like a little, a pen handy. You don't have to. You want to place the ring, the clip, so that it's about an inch and a half from the bottom edge. So I just measure up an inch and a half and just put myself a little mark there. You probably can't see it, but it's right there. And then I also just use a little tiny bit of the tape. Um, just make sure you don't go up too high with it. I kind of just center it um, because you don't want it sticking out the top of your pocket. Um, so just a little bit of tape and then stick this right on there. Okay, so it's like that. And then you will take the pocket piece that you just made. And again, if you don't want to use a double-sided tape, you don't have to. Clips will hold it just fine. You can just clip all the way, right, way around the edge. If you're using the tape, make sure you put it right on the edges because you don't want to have it inside of your pocket, okay? 
So I just do quickly three pieces on the sides and the bottom. can't see it because it's white on white but it's there <laughs> and then we'll peel our backing off and then you just line this up with the bottom and sometimes you might have to go back and like trim around just so that everything matches up perfectly um, like I'm gonna have to mine's off just a little bit so I just take my scissors down here and just trim it up. Just match everything up nice and neat. So you've got it put together like that. And then we will go over to our sewing machine and we're basically just gonna top stitch all the way around the entire thing, okay? Okay, I have both of my pockets taped on and I'm gonna just top stitch all the way around. Um, it doesn't matter if you do it so that this side is up or this side is up. Either way, you're gonna see bobbin stitches um, so just pick away. I like to do it with the pocket up, um, just so I can make sure the pocket is staying where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and top stitch around all, both of those, all, for all of the sides. And then um, again, you know, I don't backstitch, so I'm going to pull my threads to the back before I get down to that corner so that I don't, it makes it easier to pull them through. Um, but if you don't remember to do that part, it's okay too. You can make it work. got it sewn. I've got my threads. So I'm just going to pull those to the back, tie those off and burn the ends. And you can see those tied off burnt ends just a little bit, but it's not enough to where it ruins the look of anything. So it's really fine. Um, in my opinion, that looks better than when vinyl rips apart because it's got too many holes in it. So it's kind of one of those pick your battle type of things. It's not going to be perfect, but it's better than the alternative. So I've got mine burnt. See, you can barely see it. You can feel it if you touch it, but it's not a big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and top stitch this one, and then we will attach our snaps to the top and they will be finished. Okay, I have got mine ready. The only thing left to do is to put the snaps on the flaps. So we're gonna do the same thing again, get the pattern piece for the flap, line it up and punch your hole where that snap belongs. Okay. And then we're gonna put our snap in. So for this part, we still have this little thing. Remember the other side had the raised center. We want the flat side this time. So the flat side is gonna go up um, and then we're going to need the other tool, the one with the skinnier top, for setting it. Now for this one, the two pieces that we need, there's four pieces that come with spring snaps. We use two of them. So we want this will be what shows from the outside. And this will be the snap part. Okay. So we're going to take the flat one and poke it through from the outside. Put the snap part on the other one. And we're going to come over 
over here to our flat setting tool and use this. This will go in the center and then same either with your press or a hammer and just press it in just like that. There's mine. Okay. And then because vinyl's kind of stiff, you're going to end up like that. Um, if it doesn't flatten down, it eventually will relax. Um, but you can just sit there and keep creasing it. Or if you need, if it's really bad, put some clips on it for a little bit to hold it in place. And now I'm going to do my second one and we will have them both finished. And there is that one. Snap them. And how cute is that? Aren't they just the most adorable little things? So there are both of mine. And I just really hope you guys love this. Um, and just show us off. Show me what you've made. Um, and just everybody go give Oakla Roots um, a subscribe. She is very handy to have in your back pocket. <laughs> she um, is very knowledgeable with sewing and she does a lot of really awesome tutorials. Um, plus she's super sweet. So go subscribe to her channel too. And I hope you tune in for our next video. Bye, thank you.